Now there is another method that we can use to find stationary points and that is the second differential method. Now in order to do this let's just remind ourselves that we had stationary points for the curve y equals x cubed minus 3 times x squared minus 24x minus 7. We also found out that dy by dx was 3x squared minus 6x minus 24. Now what I'm going to do now is consider the second differential. I'm going to differentiate dy dx with respect to x again. And what that is going to do is going to give me d2y by dx squared equals if we differentiate this we get 6x minus 6. Okay? Now, in order to test the nature of each of the stationary points, I'm just going to give you a bit of background here of what d2y by dx squared represents. It actually represents the rate of change of the gradient. Now, let's imagine that we've got a curve that is coming up and decreasing. Okay, it turns around at a point like this. Okay, here's our stationary point where dy dx is zero. Now let's just think about what the gradient could be of the tangent here. Something sensible. Well, let's just draw something on. If we had a tangent here, it would have a positive gradient. Maybe dy dx was equal to, let's say, 2. And then when we get to our next point, let's say here, the gradient isn't going to be as steep. It would be a line that slopes something like that. And let's suppose dy dx was, say, 1. We know what dy dx is here. dy dx is 0. So dy dx equals 0 at our stationary point. It's flat. When we come across to the other side, let's say this point here, maybe dy dx is minus 1. It's definitely going to be a minus number because the graph is decreasing. The gradient will be negative. So let's imagine it's negative 1. And when I get over to, say, this point here, maybe the gradient will be negative 2. It's certainly going to be a negative number, okay, because it's decreasing. dy dx equals minus 2, say. Now, imagine that this was, say, temperature. And as I move from left to right, okay, temperature, say, is it's 2 degrees. 2 degrees C say and then 1 degree C and 0 degree C and minus 1 degree C and minus 2 degree C. I think you'd say to yourself, God, it's getting colder. The temperature is decreasing. What we've got here is that the rate of change of the gradient is decreasing as we go round this turning point. So what we have is that at this turning point d2y by dx squared should be a negative number because it represents the fact that the rate of change of gradient is decreasing. So I'm just going to write that in for you that at a max, okay, d2y by dx squared is decreasing so it's going to be a negative number, a number less than zero. Now if I follow this argument through a bit further, okay, and we have a graph that is, say, shaped like this. We have a turning point here, a minimum. And I repeat this argument again by taking a point to the left, let's say there, the gradient here is clearly decreasing. Let's say it's got a gradient dy dx of, say, negative 2. And when we get further round, okay, let's just move it to about there, say, maybe the gradient is going to be, well, not maybe, it's going to be less 
um, it's going to be negative and it's going to be more than minus 2. So dy dx, let's say, is negative 1. And when we get to this stationary point, dy dx is going to be 0 because it's flat. And when we go around to this point here, dy dx, let's give it something sensible, it's going to be positive now. Let's say dy dx is 1. And finally, when we get to this point, let's we, so we see that this gradient here is positive. It could be 2. It's certainly going to be more than 1 anyway. Let's say it's 2. But it's going to be a positive number, more than 1. That's the point. And as we move from left to right in the direction of x increasing, notice what's happening to our gradient. Minus 2, minus 1, naught, 1, 2. If this were temperature and we were the temperature was minus 2 degrees C, then minus 1, then 0 degrees and 1 degree C and 2 degrees C, you'll be saying it's getting warmer, the temperature is rising. So what we've got here is the rate of change of gradient is increasing. The rate of change of dy dx is increasing as we go around this minimum point. And we can write that down by saying that at a min, d2y by dx squared is a positive number. So I'll just put that down here, that at a min, d2y by dx squared is a positive number. It's greater than naught. OK, so this is the theory behind the idea that we're going to use. We've now differentiated the curve with respect to x a second time over. We've got d2y by dx squared. And we want to test our points, our stationary points. So we say when x is minus 2, when x equals minus 2, d2y by dx squared equals 6 times minus 2 minus another 6. So that's minus 12 minus another 6 is minus 18. In other words, less than zero, a negative number. So what's that telling us? It's telling us that therefore what we have is therefore we have less than zero, a maximum. Therefore a max okay, at minus 2, 21. Now we move on to when x is our other stationary point that we're testing, x is 4 d2y by dx squared, we get by substituting x equals 4 into here, so 6 times 4 minus 6. 6 times 4 minus 6, 6 fours are 24, and 24 minus 6 is 18. And that's positive, greater than naught. So therefore what we have is a minimum. Okay, because if it's greater than naught, as you saw it was we saw over here, we have a min. So we have a min at four minus eighty-seven. Okay, so that tells us the nature of the stationary points, and we should be able to draw the graph again. Well we did do that, we drew it earlier, okay, and you may remember it was let's just scroll back. Okay.